Prior to doing any repairs, service, or maintenance, understand and follow all company safety rules and vehicle lockout, tagout procedures. Place the vehicle in two-wheel drive mode. Required tools for this installation include the following. A 3 8 inch impact tool, 3 8 inch flex head ratchet, 1 quarter inch standard ratchet, a 3 8 swivel or universal joint, a 3 8 3 inch extension, a 15 millimeter deep well socket, 7, 10, 14, 19 millimeter and 5 8 standard sockets, 3 quarter, 5 8 half inch and 14 millimeter ratchet combination wrenches, 9 sixteenths, 7 sixteenths and 13 millimeter standard combination wrenches, a number 27 long bit Torx and possibly a mid-size flat blade screwdriver. Remove the transfer case skid plate. Depending on the model and year, the skid plate may weigh between 30 and 50 plus pounds. Remove all but two of the six 5 eighths bolts, leaving the two opposing sides bolts still attached. As a safety precaution, place a transmission jack under the skid plate before removing the last two bolts. Lower the jack and pull it and the plate from under the vehicle. Remove the front drive shaft. Start with the four bolts joining the drive shaft yoke and pinion flange at the transfer case. You'll need a 5 8 inch ratchet combination wrench. Next, remove the four bolts joining the serrated flange and pinion flange on the front axle differential. You'll need an impact wrench, a universal joint, and a 5 8 inch impact socket. Due to the serrated flanges at the U-joint, you'll need to bump the connecting point to break the components free. Remove the drive shaft and set this out of the way. Drop the rear drive shaft and carrier bearing assembly. Using a 15 mm deep well socket and a 3 inch extension, remove the driver's side bolt from the carrier bearing bracket. Place a transmission jack under the bearing assembly. You'll want to support the assembly and the drive shaft going back to the rear axle. The combination of the two drive shafts is very heavy. Remove the bolt on the passenger side of the carrier bracket now. With the transmission jack supporting the carrier bearing assembly and drive shafts, remove the four 5 8 inch bolts from the yoke flange and the transfer case pinion flange. Bump the end of the drive shaft to break it free and lower the jack. With the drive shafts lowered, slide the whole assembly out from under the vehicle toward the passenger side of the truck. Before removing the transfer case, remove the shift linkage by pulling the linkage out and away from the levers. If they do not separate, use a screwdriver to pry between the two. Do not loosen the set bolt. Unplug both the electrical connection and the vent hose from the top of the transfer case. Remove all but one of the side bolts from the transfer case. To remove the top bolt, you'll use a flex head ratchet a universal joint, and a 14 millimeter socket. You cannot see the bolt, and the ratchet, universal joint, and socket will be positioned like this. From the bottom bolt, you'll use the flex head ratchet and a 14 millimeter socket. A 14 millimeter ratchet combination wrench may be used for all of the other bolts. With one side bolt still in place, Position the transmission jack securely under the transfer case. Remove the remaining transfer case bolt. 
Pull or push the unit back off of the spline transmission shaft and lower the jack. Slide the unit and the jack out from under the frame. Place the new transfer case on the transmission jack. Position it as close to its finished position as possible on the jack. This may require the use of several blocks of wood or some type of spacer. Slide the new unit sideways under the frame with the rear drive shaft flange toward the driver's side of the frame. Rotate the unit counterclockwise around the fuel filter. Do not hit the filter. Align the mounting studs with holes in the transmission adapter housing. It may be necessary to rotate the pinion flange on the transfer case to mate with the shaft on the transmission. With the splines mated, press the case against the adapter housing. Install the eight mounting nuts to secure the transfer case to the transmission adapter housing. Note, at this time, in order to rotate the transfer case to attach both the front and rear drive shafts, you must place the transmission in neutral. First remove the transmission shift linkage bracket and then the cable. Move this out of the way. Then rotate the transmission shift lever counterclockwise until you reach the neutral position. Reinstall the transfer case vent tube, the linkage, and the wiring connection. Place the drive shaft and carrier bearing assembly back onto the transmission jack. Roll the whole drive shaft assembly back in place under the vehicle and lift the carrier bearing assembly into place. Tighten the 15 mm bolt onto the driver's side of the carrier bracket. Using four 5 8 bolts, attach the rear drive shaft's U-joint flange onto the transfer case pinion flange. Install the other bolt on the carrier bearing assembly. Tighten both bolts and lower the transmission jack. Installing the PTO or power takeoff unit. Earlier in the installation, you removed the transmission shift linkage and bracket and positioned it out of the way. Remove the PTO cover plate bolts. Apply Loctite to the PTO mounting studs with a number 248 stick. Leave the PTO cover on the transmission while installing the mounting bolts. This will prohibit any jam nuts from falling into the transmission during this procedure. Prior to the installation, rotate the fitting for the fluid lubricating line on the PTO to a 1 o'clock position. Lock the set of jam nuts on the PTO mounting stud and use a half inch ratchet combination wrench to install each stud. With all of the studs installed, Remove the cover and gasket. Slip the new gasket over the studs. Place the PTO over the studs and hand tighten the top flange nut first. Tighten the nut till it seats and then back off one full turn. Note, this will enable the PTO to be lifted at the bottom and provide access for the flange nuts to be placed on the two bottom outside studs. Finger tighten all of the flange nuts. With a half inch wrench, tighten the PTO flange nuts in a star pattern starting with the top stud. Installing the transmission fluid lubricating line. Place the fluid line fitting on the PTO fitting and finger tighten. Note, this is the fitting that was rotated prior to installing the PTO. Remove the plug from the front oil cooler line with a three-quarter inch wrench 
and install a straight JIC fitting. The fitting uses a 5 8 open end wrench. Tighten the line fitting completely with a 9 16 open end or flare nut wrench and then tighten the line fitting at the PTO. With both line fittings installed and tightened, remove the bolt from the pan with a 10 mm socket and install the fluid line clamp using the bolt provided. Installing the main pressure line. Place the main pressure line fitting on the PTO JIC fitting and finger tighten. Note, the rest of this procedure will need to be done quickly as fluid will drain from the plug as soon as it is removed. Remove this plug from the transmission case with a 3 quarter inch combination wrench and replace with a straight JIC fitting. Cover the end of the JIC fitting with your finger while you tighten it. With the JIC fitting tightened, remove your finger and quickly thread the pressure line fitting onto it. Tighten both pressure line fittings with a 9 16 open end or flare nut wrench. Reinstall the front drive shaft. Bolt the serrated flange on the drive shaft to the matching pinion flange on the front differential first. Then, lift the other end of the shaft, rotate the transfer case flange to match the four bolt holes on the drive shaft yoke, and tighten these. Reinstall the transmission linkage. Clip the shift cable to the shift lever. Rotate the transmission shift lever clockwise back into the park position. The bracket will now be back in its original position. Reinstall the 15 mm bolts and tighten. Installing the transfer case shaft. Slide the splined end of the transfer case shaft through the opening in the transfer case towards the PTO. Insert the splines into the end of the PTO shaft, lining up the edge of the yellow tape with the edge of the PTO shaft. Insert the bearing assembly over the shaft and onto mounting studs on the transfer case. Install and tighten the two flange nuts on the mounting studs. Install the Zerk fitting onto the transfer case shaft. Check the position of the shaft to the PTO again and adjust if necessary. Install the collar onto the bearing assembly and using a number 27 long bit Torx, tighten the collar. Grease the fitting until grease seeps out from around the PTO output shaft. Grease the fitting on the bearing assembly with two full pumps from the grease gun. With the PTO and transfer case installation complete, reinstall the skid plate. This concludes the installation procedure.